Welcome to Under the Alley Lights, an alley sports podcast with Kevin and Adam. The today's podcast is sponsored by SeaGeek, where you can get $20 off your next purchase with code LIGHTSET. Today, we discuss the rise and downfall and give a rundown of the current alley sports teams since the start of the 2020. So welcome to the show today. Today we're going to start out with the Los Angeles Dodgers, who are in a tough situation after a promising start to the decade. They won the title in 2020, although many people question the legitimacy of it. The Dodgers haven't much, done much to prove the haters wrong, as in 2022, albeit they got 111 wins, franchise record, they got bounced out in the first round. And as we have Adam, who he thinks it's a fluke, right Adam? I mean, yeah, the Dodgers did win that lone title in 2020, a uh, shortened season but have yet to repeat that success since. They've had multiple postseason collapses, even before 2020. They can't seem to break that trend, even with the most talented roster in baseball. I mean, they just went and signed Freddie Freeman, 2022, uh, the World Cup, or not <laughs> World Cup. <laughs> See, I get, I'm, I'm watching the World Cup World Series. Yeah, and then you also have the Los Angeles Angels, who are second fiddle to the Dodgers. They're not even in Los Angeles, they're in Anaheim, but they're called Los Angeles, so we're gonna talk about them. They have not reached the postseason since 2014, despite heavy spending to improve their roster with arguably the two best players in the world. And they can be sent to the playoffs. So, you know, basically with them, they... No one even cares no about one, the No one cares about the Angels right now. So we're going to transition to you have the LA Lakers, who have completely fallen off since that um, championship run that they did in 2020, like the Dodgers. But it's 10 times worse, as they didn't even make the playoffs nor the play-in last year, even though they have their big three of LeBron, AD, and Westbrook. I mean, yeah, after falling to the Phoenix Suns and uh, 2021's playoffs, Lakers really have struggled to stay healthy. With Anthony Davis spending more time in street clothes than on the floor, LeBron's recent stretch of injuries its made it hard for this Lakers team that lacks depth because of all the trades that they've done. In 2019, we saw the Lakers trade away Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart. They let Julius Randle walk and gave away uh, three first-round picks to the Pelicans Those players to get are Huh? Those players are thriving right now as well. Oh, yeah, big time. Brandon Ingram's leading a, a young Pelican squad. I mean, Lonzo Ball's still injured. You got Josh Hart. He's doing good on Portland. Uh, Julius Randle, I mean, he's Julius Randle. And then you got uh, another trade where they traded for Russell Westbrook in 2021. They sent Kuzma to uh, Washington, and he's balling out right now. And they could use some of that depth. You also have, you know, questions now within, like, Lakers, social media or whatever, like, them maybe blowing up the team because, you know, this, you look at the roster now, and so even though people like to say the West is wide open, I just, I don't know how you look at that team and think with a couple moves they'll be a championship-level team. It's definitely not wide open for them. I mean, they're 7-12, and 12, sitting 13th in the West. Do you think the AD trade was worth it? In I mean, right they got a championship, but, again, how much do these championships matter when you give away so much depth? and you can't compete for years ahead. Like their future is stunted that's, now. Because... That's the big dilemma with a lot of sports teams, you know? Like, at least they've won a championship, unlike... But a lot of people, like you said, with the Dodgers, they question the legitimacy of it. That's true. I mean, but at least, they, like I said, they're able to win something, unlike the Clippers, who have been a massive disappointment since the pairing of PG and Kawhi. You were talking about the AED with street clothes. You know, a lot of people are not talking about Kawhi. Kawhi this season has only played, he's missed 18 of the possible 23 games this season. And, you know, with aspirations when in 2019 to make the finals and overtake the Lakers, the pairing haven't just been able to be healthy at the same time. I mean, yeah, they're right there, but health has always been a problem with this Clippers team. I mean, you go back to when they had Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. They just could never stay healthy, especially for the playoffs. And you're seeing it again with two stars, uh, PG and Kawhi, like you were saying. Uh, I just don't see that team lasting very long. With all the load management, we've yet to see... Kawhi and Paul George on the floor for like multiple stretches this season. You can say they're in a similar situation like the Lakers because they traded the mortgage their whole future for two level players and like you're looking at that trade now. Look who the Clippers traded, similar to Lakers, they let Shea Kyojis Alexander go and all those picks attached to it. So and they have really shown nothing. Okay, they got past they got to the Western Conference Finals, but that was never the vision, you know, once this team was assembled. Well, like the Angels and Clippers, really, the Chargers can't seem to shake like the little brother narrative that's going on in L.A. And their more successful roommate, the Rams, uh, they won the Super Bowl last year. So the Chargers, even though they have a better record than the Rams this season, they've really failed to live up to the expectations that were placed on them this year. They brought in a bunch of talent, uh, defensive talent, because that's where they struggled 
um, and they were expected to win like 13 games this season, but they brought in uh, edge rusher Khalil Mack and signed uh, cornerback J.C. Jackson, but they are allowing the 29th worst uh, points per game defensively, 25.6 points per game, and they're just not holding on, I guess, in these games. Like, they give up a lot of late leads, and they're sitting uh, about 500 right now, but you not know, looking good. We see, a, you know, if you look at it, you kind of see a pattern between the, the quote-unquote little brother teams with LA, as no matter what changes or spending they try to do, it's funny how all of them, either due to injuries or just bad management, they've all been unable to even reach the mountaintop as their big brother teams have been able to do. And speaking of, like, reaching the mountaintop, uh, the Rams... They had success just this most recent season, winning the Super Bowl, uh, and by making a blockbuster trade, just like the Lakers and Dodgers, to get uh, former QB uh, Jared or send former QB Jared Goff uh, to the Tr Detroit Lions for Matt Stafford. Uh, the Rams made a number of other trades over the last couple of years to construct kind of a super team, adding like Jalen Ramsey from the Jaguars and Vaughn Miller from the Broncos. But it's starting to come back to bite them. Uh, you have the Rams are three and eight right now, and their season's basically done. Uh, futures kind of ruined, just like the Lakers. The way they're trending right now, it's the same way, like you said, the Dodgers and well, not the Dodgers necessarily, but the Lakers. You know how they're trending. Um, you know, obviously, it's not a position they found themselves to to be in. Like once they made those big time moves, they expected to someone still be competing, especially like the Lakers. Like if you ask after they won that championship, you still expect them to be competitive at least for the next two, three years at most. Most people would say, yeah. And to see the type of, the type of fall off hat that they have, as we see with the Rams, the future is not as bright in LA as it was in 2020. And honestly, I mean, anyone can make a prediction how the rest is going to go. It's really you really don't, do not know. Yeah, I don't think the 2020s are going to be very nice for at least uh, the the top teams of the LA area. What, so. would you, what would you say is the best position LA team right now and the worst position team? It's got the Dodgers are in the best position. I mean, their roster is still one of the most talented they just have to not choke in the playoffs because <laughs> that's been their problem but in yeah. terms of lakers and rams really their future outlook is a little bit bleak more so the lakers and the rams because football it's a little easier to come bounce back from i mean and you see that like it's a little off topic but you see with lebron led teams you know the, the fall off is always inevitable blit gm <laughs> blit gm yes it's always inevitable uh, so yeah, that's our mini breakdown of the current status of LA-based sports teams right now since the beginning of the, uh, the decade of 2020. Thank you all for joining us. Please comment for our next podcast topic or idea in the comment section below. And yeah, make sure to get that um, code LIGHTS at SeatGeek for $20 off your first purchase. And we'll see you next time. Peace.